Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on data mining. In today's class, we will discuss about the k-means clustering algorithm. So if you remember the last class, we have discussed about the types of clustering in which we have discussed about the partition and clustering, which is says, simply a division of the set of objects into non-overlapping clusters such that each data object is in exactly one cluster. So, k-means clustering is an example of partitional clustering algorithm, okay. So, in this particular algorithm which is a very simple clustering algorithm, <coughs> the number of clusters that is the value of k must be specified by the user. So, if the user wants the value of k to be 3, that is number of cluster to be 3, he should give the value of k as 3. If the user wants the number of clusters to be 4, then he should give the value of k equal to 4. So, we have to choose k initial centroids. So, this k initial clusters will be initially termed as k initial centroids. So, each cluster is associated with a centroid. So, what is a centroid here? You can say that the we use the mean of data points as the centroid. Okay. So, in this k-means clustering algorithm, we first choose k initial centroids, okay. Then each cluster is associated with a centroid. Each data point is assigned to the cluster with the closest centroid. So, the closest centroid means we will compute the distance from every data point to every centroid and we will choose that particular data to be assigned to that particular centroid for which the distance is minimum. That's why we have used the term called closest. Okay. So, the basic algorithm is very simple. As you can see, we have to select the k points as the initial centroids. From the data objects, you can select any k points as the initial centroid. Then you have to repeat this process until the centroid value do not change. Fine. So, we have to form k clusters by assigning all the points to the closest centroid. Then after assigning the clusters to the closest centroid, recompute the centroid for each cluster. Okay. So, you have to repeat this process until the value of the centroid do not change. Fine. So, let us better understand k-means clustering with the help of an algorithm. Okay. So, you as you can see, these are the data points. So, here in the value of k, I have given as 3. So, there are 3 centroids. One is there, one is there and one is there. You can choose any centroid, any data point as the centroid. There is no hard and first rule that you have to choose the first, which point as the centroid. So, you can randomly choose any data point as the centroid. Okay. So, these 3 data points are choose as the centroid in the first iteration. Iteration means because since we have to write repeat, there is a loop. Okay. So, after selecting these points, now you can see that there are numerous points. Now, I have to assign that this particular point, you have to find the distance of every data point to every centroid. Then you can see that some data points will belo belong to some centroid because their distance is minimum. So, you can see the brown data points is belonging to that particular centroid. Okay. The blue data points is belonging to this particular centroid and this green data points are belonging to this particular centroid. So, now we have got three centroids. Now, you can see after assigning the value to the each centroid, then what we have to do? As you can see in the algorithm, I have formed k clusters by assigning all points to the closest centroid. So, this first step is done here. So, I have assigned it. Because initially I have choose this and I have assigned the points to the cl clusters. Then you can see the centroid shift from this particular position to this particular position. Okay. Now you have to compute the recompute the centroid value. Okay. So how can you compute the centroid value? By computing the mean of all these data points. Okay. You can compute the centroid value. So, after computing the centroid value, you can see the centroid has shifted to this particular position from this to this. So, again you have to repeat the step that form k clusters by assigning all the points to the closest cluster. So, now you can see the first cluster, shape of the first cluster is different. The second cluster has got some new members. The third cluster has 
eliminate some of the members to the first cluster so in the third iteration the cluster look like this so after this you can again see that the centroid has shifted because now the centroid will be what the mean of all these data points so the mean of all these data points will be shift to this particular center point now it is shifted to this point now it is this shifted to this point now you have to again go to that loop and you have to again form the clusters by assigning data points to the nearest centroid so then in the next iteration you have to again see that whether the value of centroid has changed or not yes it has changed from this position to this position now you have to see that whether it, have, uh, it has again changed it or not yes it had changed you can see this particular centroid has shifted to this particular position okay so you have to again compute okay then you can see that this particular point which was earlier belonged to this cluster now it has belonged to the cluster this so the value of the cluster position of the data points will change in each iteration so after this iteration you have to again recompute the centroid now you can see that the centroid remain in the proper position so you have to stop the algorithm here now the final result is this after six iteration your final clusters is this so you can see this so these are the data points which will belong to the first cluster these are the data points which will belong to the second cluster and these are the data points that will belong to the third cluster so we can see that this is how the basic k-means clustering work now some some of you may got confused that how can you change how this algorithm works first you have to choose the data points as the initial centroid so after choosing this you have to find the distance of each data point to the closest centroid suppose for this particular object you have to find the distance for this particular object you will find a distance from here from there and from here you will find it it is nearer to this point so it will be shifted to this particular position this particular data point will be shifted to that particular centroid why because the distance is minimum to that particular centroid so this is how your k-means clustering algorithm will work now see it is a simple iterative algorithm because there are iterations so we have to choose the initial centroids and we have to repeat assign each point to the nearest centroid and recompute the cluster centroid until the centroid value stop changes okay so initial centroids are often chosen randomly in case of k-means clustering algorithm okay so clusters produced can vary from one run to another so it, it will depend on the cluster so since initial centroids are often so randomly cluster produced can vary from one run to another so if you run the same algorithm two times you will get two different clusters because the initial centroids will be chosen randomly by a random function okay like array and the rand is used to select random ran, random number generated in an c programming language fine the centroid is typically the mean of the points in the cluster but other definitions are possible generally whenever we are taking uh, the centroid in case of k-means clustering for algorithm we generally take the mean of the points and the as the centroids okay k-means will converge for common proximity major which approximately defined as centroid so whenever you are finding the distance from the centroid to the data objects you will take the help of the distance measure like your euclidean distance pearson correlation coefficient or manhattan distance you can take any distance major to find out the closest distance okay most of the co convergence happens in the first few iterations so if you want to find out the uh, complexity of k-means clustering algorithm you can see that the k-means clustering algorithm will depend on this particular thing n is the number of data points okay k is the number of clusters i is the number of iterations and d is the number of attributes number of attributes means if you're taking as the data point a student the roll number name will be the attributes so as you can see the complexity here is depending on the number of points the number of clusters the number of iterations and number of attributes but number of points will be much more larger than all of this at this particular thing so it will be order of n okay fine so a complexity will be order of n where n is the number of points